Dr. Lori, this is What's It Worth. We've got some jewelry for you today. Hi, Teresa. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm fine. So tell me, where do you live? Right here in Africa. Okay, so not too far, right? Mm -hmm. Did you bring me a family heirloom? I hope so. Okay. <laughs> I think it was from my family. Exactly. Might have been from a neighbor down the street. I don't really know how mom got that. No, seriously. Exactly. Okay, so how did you acquire this? Uh, my mother. Your she mother. She had it, I don't know how long. All she right. never told me. My mother was very kind of secretive with a lot of things. Okay. She would tell you some stories about stuff, other stories she kept quiet. This is one of the things that she kept quiet about. So she didn't want you to know the whole story behind this. Exactly. So I might be revealing a couple of family secrets <laughs> I'm hoping. here, but you know, I'm hoping, yeah. Yeah, sorry mom, but you know. So um, this particular piece, so let, let me see if I can guess a little bit about your family lineage. Assuming that this particular piece came down in a family, there was someone in your family who was living in England sometime between 1885 and 1900. Yes. Is that possible? Very possible. Have I met you before today? No. So I'm like the antique psychic. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. Like, you know? So basically what I'm looking at is a ring that dates to about 1885 to about 1900. It is a Victorian ring. Why is it Victorian? Because it's named for that period when Queen Victoria was on the throne from 1837 to 1901 when she dies. She used to be the longest reigning queen, then Queen Elizabeth came along and she knocked her out. <laughs> so basically, what you have is a Victorian ring. This ring is an amethyst. Um, amethyst, purple stone, very, very desirable. It is a naturally developed amethyst. It is about, I would say, between eight and 10 carats. So now if this were a diamond, we'd be talking, you know, Jennifer Lopez, you know, Carmen Diaz, you know, somebody like that is going to have like an eight to 10 carat diamond, like a big rock. Mm -hmm. Amethysts do come very large, between five and even 10 carats. So you're looking at that eight to 10 carat weight size. Large, it's a cocktail, we would call it a cocktail ring. Okay. In the Victorian era, these stones were very popular in jewelry. These stones are set in this particular case, this one is set in a setting which is gold. Now you'd say, well, is it 14 karat gold, Dr. Lurie, or 18 karat gold, or maybe it's 10 karat gold? It's nine karat gold. Nine karat gold, what are you talking about? Yes. Well, in England, they had a different way to identify carat weight. So you could have a, a nine karat gold piece, you could also have a 15 karat gold piece. Whereas in the United States, it's more common for you to have a 14 karat gold piece. That doesn't mean that you can't have a 14 karat gold piece made in another country. It's just more common of the way in which they would identify how much um, purity of gold there was into the standard. Okay. All right. So it's marked inside 9 CT, 9 carats, okay. which tells you about how malleable the gold is. So you know that gold can actually easily be heated up and moved, right? That's what you have here. So when you have a lower carat weight, 9 carat, 10 carat, something like that, it is literally um, less strong, okay. okay? So now what you're looking at here is also that very large central set, and it is set by prongs, it's prong set amethyst. If you look at the back of the, of the actual setting, you can see the whole back of the faceted cut, right? Mm -hmm. Faceted cut amethyst, you can see all the way through. What they're trying to do is leave you apart in the setting so you can actually allow light to come through. And if the light comes through, what to is reflect. It? Exactly, to reflect the beauty of the color, because right. it's all about the color. So it's a Victorian ring, and as I said, it dates to about 1885 to about 1895, and it's set in nine carat English gold. <laughs> And this particular piece would have been worn on a couple of occasions, typically for an engagement. Okay. Could have also been utilized, not typically a wedding, but usually an engagement, or at the particular birth of a child. Okay? okay. So it could be either of those particular occasions. Mm -hmm. But an amethyst is usually associated with a big celebration. Purple is oftentimes in the history of art and the history of jewelry related to the clergy or the church. So if there was someone in, who was a minister of some sort in your family, it could have been that person's ring as well. Is so that possible? my mother telling me to wear it at my children's baptisms. So your mother is... told you to wear it at your children's baptisms. So she might have gotten the word that this particular piece was actually a piece which came down in the family right. at the birth of a child. Yeah. 
Okay? Yes. All right. So that's basically what we're looking at here. So while it could be an engagement, it most probably was gifted to someone in the birth of a child. Now here's the problem with the Victorians. The Victorians were all about death. <laughs> so oftentimes these particular rings would actually be held onto or handed down to those children. It was very difficult, of course, in the 19th century to bring a child to, of course, the age of 10, 12, 15, whatever it is. You had a lot of child, of child deaths in that time period. And oftentimes, these particular rings would have been worn, called mourning jewelry, at a funeral of a child who had passed. Okay. okay? I don't know what your family history is, but just the fact that you would know that this could be connected to a baptism from your mother Mm -hmm. relates to perhaps something like that has happened. Children, right. And this is the beauty of starting to try to put together your family history, your family information. Yes. But these objects can tell you a lot about your family that you didn't even know. I don't even know your family. I just met you today. I just saw the ring when you walked in. But basically, I'm able to tell you, here's some information that you might be able to go on yes. to get more information about it. What do you think it's worth? Now you're thinking, yeah. oh, it's worth a lot to me now because you know what? I don't care about the money now because now I've got a, a historical story very, to go with it. Right, very uh, an ancestral piece. Uh, you know, what? it really is a family heirloom. We yes. asked you this in the beginning. You're like, I don't really know. I guess it is. You know, I've speculated on it, and my mother has passed now for a while, but she just has always said, you, you know, it's for baptisms, and then when you're children, you do it for, you know, so she always was very big on the, the birth aspect. With the children, so, to hand it know, down. Yes, yeah. and you know, firstborn, you know, this is now to you, your firstborn is having a baptism, so right. you wear this, and then you have any more, blah, 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 and so, Worth, I would have no clue. No clue. None no whatsoever. Idea. I don't even know what ballpark to even Not play even in. <laughs> we can't even find you a stadium to play no, in. I don't know. <laughs> Value on this ring is just about $650 to $700. Wow. It's not sky high value because the gold content is rather low at mm -hmm. nine carats. And amethysts, of course, are relatively popular, but the ring, it's the, the, the um, stone itself from this time period, in very good condition, mind you. They didn't wear this all day while they're doing their work. Right. You know, this was a special ring. Um, the piece, the, the stone itself is probably worth $400 of that $650 to $700 range. So Happens. value on it, I would say retail value, about $700. And when you're thinking about your jewelry, I want you to think about a couple of things. A ring like this deserves its own box, its own place in your jewelry box. Why is that? If you put these rings next to other rings, they can scratch. You can actually scratch the table, which is the flat side of the actual stone. You can also, of course, scratch the gold as well. I'm Dr. Lori. This is What's It Worth.